Hello and welcome! In this video we will be taking a look at the recently released project Stackobot. There is already an Unreal Engine video showing a, a, a little overview on everything that was done inside it or well the most important stuff and how this project is leveraging all Unreal Engine 5 powerful features. So I really do, do not want to just tell you again what you can already see in the video by the guy who made it. So instead, what this video is about is how can this starter kit can be used as a learning tool regardless of the expertise you may have. Because there are a lot of interesting things and I usually get a lot the, the question on how to start, how can I learn more about Unreal? And one of the best ways is checking projects, already made projects, and how do they do stuff? And if you think you may be too, too new for this, then you should still give it a try. Download it, try to understand some of the, 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 the tools that are being used here and it's also the same argument in the flip side where ah, I already know this stuff why should I download it or why should I check it out I do not have time right but still the thing is that it doesn't matter if you're just starting off or if you're a veteran because there will be something interesting for you inside this is because people do the same stuff but in different ways so it's a way you can broaden your your horizons so let's start so let's begin by first downloading the project you can find it here in the announcement just click it should give you this marketplace page sign in download it and you're ready to go so let's go to unreal so let's start with the with the notion that you really just started a project of this size can be very overwhelming it's like whoa i i i just learned how to put stuff on the level like i don't know maybe a cube how am i go going to get from here to there right well the well the the best way to start with a project like this is find something that you will really like to do or that you find really interesting and just stick to it for example if you want to find how this oh, and i hope my the volume isn't too, too loud but if, if you want to find how this works uh, specifically the like the air pushing you upwards then ignore the rest find in the video the, the overview that I believe was here there should be a point it talks about blueprints uh, here's talk about printing a new robot the interaction components or just click it right click it edit fun and you will see how it's breakdown right the viewport you will see what components does, does it have uh, I find it a little weird that it's um, sideways, but the people developing it must chosen this direction for some reason. The viewport is a good place to start. You will see how the blueprint is made of, what interaction boxes, well, collision boxes you need, the forces that you can apply. Well, this is just an error component, like where it will be the the force applied right and the uh, visual effects right done in niagara if niagara is your thing then you can also right click well not right click just select the the niagara system asset double click it and you will see how it's being done right and all of this could be really foreign to you but if you're interested on how to do this then it's easier to break down 
um, the knowledge. It's easier to divide and conquer, right? Okay, I already have something that works, but how is it working? I don't understand what this node is or this one is. Then, oh, let's search for Niagara tutorials. Uh, here I will be able to edit the default properties of some variables. Here I will make my own emitters, right? So little by little is how we progress. And that is one of the main points of this video. It doesn't mean that uh, because you know nothing, you can't get nothing out of it. No, it's a great place to start. It will show you that uh, things that you thought you didn't even knew that you didn't know them, right? So it's a good place to start mapping all the realm because at the start it's easier to just, oh, let's make a game. Uh, multiplayer game with 16 players at the same time and it will become a, a, an MMO next but <laughs> most people say that because they don't really know how much effort it goes to creating something even small like this another thing that I wanted to point out it was that it's good to understand that every solu solution or implementation you will find here is not the only one that exists. It's just the one that the developers decided that fitted the best with what they wanted to do. What do I mean by that? Is that if you find that these cables are made by a spline, well, this doesn't mean that you should also, if you want cables, you should only use splines. I mean, they're great, yeah, you should use it, <laughs> but maybe you you need this as a static mesh or something more. A better example would be, for example, if you examine one of these blueprints, you can right click and edit. You will see sometimes in the interaction component, I believe, uh, let me edit it. Here they create event dispatchers. Uh, we already did, I believe, a, a class on Blueprint Communication, but you can use really what whatever type of Blueprint Communication you want to do. It's It really depends on what type of game you're trying to make. It's even more open in the area of uh, BFX or materials. There are a lot of ways to make the same material. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing. A good analogy would be that if you, for example, in a sport like basketball, you score points by using your hands, it doesn't mean that in every other sport that involves a ball, <laughs> you will try to use your hands. Maybe you're playing soccer, football soccer, and you try to use the hands, then you get penalized, right? It's a, a common misconception that um, the way that epic stuff does this example is the only way that you should be able to do it. And you will see people in the forum start correcting other other developers on no no in in this example they didn't organize it like this. Here you see the audio blueprints characters. Uh, it's an organization that it has worked for them. Not necessarily it scales a lot to a bigger project. Here in Blueprints, they should have a framework. And inside the framework, you can choose how to store your variables, store the data that you need. They play they play the music here because uh, this is the game instance. It stays persistent during, the, during all the, the lifetime of this project, right? You press play, the game instance is created initially and it will not be destroyed until you exit the game. They decided to play the music here because this way they can change level and the music will still keep going. So if you don't want to do that, it's fine. It doesn't mean that every time you want to play music, it must be from the game instance. It's just a thing to take in, a, in consideration when using this type of learning resources to further your knowledge of the, of the engine. And well, 
in this same vein, uh, the way that more experienced users can get value out of this type of of project is one because it has a lot a lot of stuff. If you're an artist, maybe you want to learn something like I don't know audio implementation, some meta sounds. You can do it. You can find how does everything is connected, and it gives us insight on how the developers of this project are structuring and solving problems with the cutting edge tools on their di disposal. You, if you if you have been using Unreal 5 early access, you will have known that there are a lot of limitations, there are weird bugs, there are a lot of weird stuff that should be working or is not working and if you see something like this you may be thinking oh how did they solve that i i couldn't i tried to do it like the old way and it didn't work then you can go here look around the classes look around the structure because you're an let's say you're an expert you still have a lot to work there's a still new technology this is the new enhanced input system that will take over making the input stuff more modular so it's really good to be up to date also you cannot resist the change unless you want to be out of a job sooner than later right so those are the main points i wanted to, to talk a little bit with using the opportunity of this new content example project uh, they say they will update it once Unreal Engine 5 is released and they maybe add more functionality that the community asks for. So you can also check the official post. I don't know if they, there is already a forum post. Usually also you can contact the devs, dev team in the Discord channel, the Unreal Slackers. They sometimes lur lurk there or well a good forum post will also be valid. So hopefully this video was interesting enough, entertaining enough, or at least educational enough on how you can get the most out of this project example. See you later. Uh, also, I, I just noticed that the recordings had like a laggy editor. Yeah. Apologies for that, should be fixed for the next one. Well, have a good one.